here's the deal. It is never too late. It's also never too soon. So if you are 40 plus, the most important exercise you can do is resistance training. Because starting at age 40, we can lose up to 1% of our muscle mass each year and even more of our strength and our power. This has a devastating impact on metabolism because muscle is our biggest tool to impact our metabolic rate and quickly improve insulin sensitivity, meaning burning fat. Plus resistance training is hugely important in reducing your risk of osteoporosis. You know, I've been helping women get strong since 1983. And I'm going to share exactly how to start and progress a resistance training program to build muscle and increase strength and power and important without getting injured. And speaking of injury, more muscle is protective against injury and falls. Your risks or injury are actually way bigger outside of the gym or wherever you're working out. All right, let's get started. So here's step one you got to know your starting point. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to assess and you're going to set goals. So one of the things I want you to do is your body composition and measurements. Bonus points if you can go get a DEXA scan. I would love to see you doing these twice a year. This is what they use to do bone mineral density, but you can also find out your skeletal muscle mass, your body fat, your visceral adipose tissue. So highly recommend going and getting that done. And you can find this at a lot of the different fitness centers, hospitals, etc. And then at home, you'll have a bioimpedance scale. These are inexpensive now. You can get them on Amazon and a tape measure to measure your waist and do a waist height comparison. So that's where I want you to start because we got to know what your weight's made up of. I want to know how much skeletal muscle you have starting with so we can see what we need to do to improve it. The other thing we want to look at is your current strength. And one of the simplest ways to get a gauge on your current strength is a hand grip dynamometer. This is something inexpensive from Amazon. You just grab a hold of it. It's going to give you a score based on your age. And then you can assess your progress, right? By how much increases, because we are going to track all of this stuff. So that's the first part is we're going to assess your goals. Now I divide the body into four parts. Super easy to remember. First up, upper body pulling. Those are things like bent over rows, pull-ups. They involve your biceps, your lats, your shoulders, upper body pushing, things like overhead presses, chest presses, push-ups. Those involve your chest, your triceps, your shoulders. Then hip and thigh hinging, things like step-ups and lunges and squats that involve your glutes and your quads and your hamstrings, your calves. And then core, which what I find when you're doing all the rest of that correctly, you're going to engage your core and your core is going to help with stability. But this is really your abdominals and your back extensor muscles. When I'm going to walk you through this, what I'm going to have you do is focus on compound movements. That means that we are crossing more than one joint. An example would be this is not a compound movement. I am just moving. I'm crossing over my elbow joint. But if I do this, now I am moving at my elbow joint, my shoulder, but also back over into my scapula, into my shoulder blades. So now I'm doing a compound movement. What's super cool about compound movements is they're what we do in life. Like in life, you don't do this, do you? It would look weird and not very effective. Then we're going to focus on priority areas first. So big first body parts first, and then also areas that we really know we need to improve. We're going to focus on those. We are going to work on two main things. We're going to work on strength. And what is strength? Strength is the amount of force a muscle can, can exert against a resistance. So what that would be is like how much you could bench press, how much you could push up one time, or how much you could squat one time. Power is the ability to overcome that resistance in the shortest period of time, leading the, to the ability to produce higher velocities against a given load. It's moving resistance over time, and it's often an explosive movement. It would be an example if you're doing a squat and you're coming up as quickly as possible, or maybe even tossing a jump into it. The reason I bring up power is remember, you know, you're losing muscle as you age, you're losing strength as you age, you lose a little muscle, you lose more strength, and you lose the most in power. And power is really what is the most closely linked to keeping you able to do the things you want to do. Now, 
if we're training for strength and power, we're gonna get a side effect of more muscle. And muscle hypertrophy, more muscle, this is when your muscles increase in size. This happens when muscle protein synthesis, new muscle, building new muscle, right, is better, is doing more than muscle protein breakdown. <laughs> so as we age, what happens? Muscle protein breakdown exceeds muscle protein synthesis and we start to lose muscle. What we wanna make sure of is that we are flipping that, that equation and our muscle protein synthesis is exceeding the breakdown. And how do we do that? Two things, resistance training, progressive overload load, more than what we're used to, right? If we're doing the same stuff, we are not going to progress and protein intake. And that is super duper important. And you wanna make sure that you're getting at least 30 grams of protein in at a meal. You're getting in at least two and a half to three grams of leucine to trigger that muscle protein synthesis by activating mTOR and at least 100 grams of protein overall. And you'll probably need more. I basically dose that 0.7 to one grams per pound of target body weight. Now. You want all three of these things to happen. You want the hypertrophy, you want the strength, you want the power. You want to build this quality functional muscle that is going to be able to help you do all the typical things in your day and fun stuff in your day too, right? And when you think about this, like if you want to be able to do the things in your day, you've got to train for them. So we are training here not to get better at training at the gym, we are training here so that we can get better at life, so that as we age, we can keep doing all the cool, fun stuff that we wanna do, that we've been working our butts off for so long to be able to have more time to do. We wanna make sure that we can keep doing them. That is what's super important. All right, let's talk about what things that you can do, because you can go to the gym, but I hear a lot of people, oh my gosh, I'm too out of shape to go to the gym. I was like, well, wait a minute, wait, wait. How do we ever go to the gym <laughs> if we're too out of shape to go to the gym? But the gym is an option, but if you don't want to go to the gym, or maybe you want to go to the gym one day a week and do some stuff at home, you know, some simple dumbbells, free weights, a TRX machine, or that um, lumen that comes off the wall, exercise bands, and a bench and or a ball can be some simple tools that you can get. You can literally build a whole home gym with a TRX, dumbbells, a bench and a ball under $500 and you will have everything you need to be able to get a huge, great workout. Now, I'm gonna walk you through the basics. Plus, I have a worksheet for you. So I created a worksheet with the program so that you can do this at home if you want, or you can go work with a personal trainer or a physio to help you with form, which I really love. Like what I would highly recommend because technique is everything. Remember, technique comes first is if you can work with a personal trainer or a physio, physical therapist to help you make sure you nail your form. And then every maybe six to eight weeks, work with them again to help you progress, to help you modify your program. And then remember, you're also on the scale at home, watching your skeletal muscle. Now, building skeletal muscle is a little bit like watching grass grow, I'm gonna be honest. It's a slow burn. So just make sure you give yourself time. It doesn't, you're not gonna put on five pounds of muscle overnight, but you will be amazed at how much stronger you get and how quickly that happens. But again, technique comes first. Technique, form is always the limiter. We never wanna sacrifice form for the amount of weight because if you get injured, you're out. And injuries can really be detrimental when you're 40 plus. We do not wanna be losing any muscle. We always wanna be building it. So let's talk rep range. Obviously, if you do the longer rep, the longer sets, it's gonna take longer. So I really like to focus on somewhere in the eight to 12 rep range. And what I kinda of say is if you can get to, if you can't get to eight, hey, you know, lighten it up. If you can go past 12, make it heavier. And what I want you to progress to is three sets with you know a 90 second to two minute break, see how long you need, plus a warm up set, right? Now, I'm gonna focus on technique. And when you very first start, there's two things that you're really focusing on, technique and what I call neurological learning. The first thing that happens as you start to lift weights is your nerves and muscles need to connect with each other. And that's gonna be the first way that you gain strength before you start to really even get the hypertrophy. And 
you're also going to make sure as you're doing this that you're doing really good range of motion. You know, it, we used to think, oh gosh, those bodybuilders, the people lift weights, they're less flexible. The reality is you can have great flexibility if you're doing that big range of motion. And we're also going to make sure with the, the exercises we're doing that we're doing things that require your core so that you then have your core in there for stability and balance. Because part of fitness is having, of course, great flexibility and also having great stability, right? And then potentially as you start to advance, you can even add in some balance like stepping on one leg or standing on a BOSU ball, right? Or you can add some of this in as you're warming up. Now, when you're starting, you're going to want to do a full body warm up first. And this is, you know, just a full body, easy warm up. I have to do this because I like to cold plunge in the morning and then I'm going to go to the gym and I'm cold and shivering. So I always do a big full body warm up. I want to raise my core body temperature, get the blood flowing. That is the first thing that could be something like if you're going into the gym, could be walking on the treadmill and then just doing some big full body movements. Doesn't matter, you're just getting your body moving, right? Whatever you do, you can dance around the room, you can do jumping jacks, you can do reaches, full body squats. What I like to do when I get into the gym is I'll use the TRX machine to do big deep squats, big deep chest presses, big deep pulls so that I just get all my body moving, right? So full body movement, everything's moving first, getting that blood flowing, getting your core body temperature up, that's where you start first. Then, you are going to, as you go into each exercise, the first thing you do is just a very light version of the exercise. So let's say that you are going to do a dumbbell chest press and heavy for you are 25 pound dumbbells. Your first set would be 10 pound dumbbells, right? Full range of motion, make it super easy. Just get the blood flowing, tell your body, hey, we're gonna be doing this. So it's just firing up, firing up. That's important, okay? now. Next thing, let's talk a little bit about soreness. What's good? What's your body saying? Knock it off. So especially as you're starting or you're progressing, you might get a little sore and some people get more sore than others. I'm gonna talk about some things we can do to help there. Soreness of the muscle, day later, two days later, that's fine. Soreness a week later, that's not fine. So we do not want joint site pain. That's always problematic, right? And we shouldn't have muscle soreness continuing after like two days. A couple things that can make you sore is doing too really hard on eccentric contractions. So concentric is the, like on a push-up, that would be the this way out, concentric's this. If you put a lot of load on concentric, that tends to get you more sore. So that's one thing that can do it. But things that can help with soreness, creatine actually can help you not be a sore. So creatine, of course, we know helps with strength, helps with muscle mass, with hypertrophy, but it also can help with delayed onset of muscle soreness. So there's one another big shout out as to why we want to take creatine. Good sleep is mission critical here. Doing cold therapy. Now here's the deal with cold therapy. Cold therapy can really help with reducing inflammation with helping you with soreness, but it also can block muscle protein synthesis. Remember, after you work out, you've done some micro tears, some damage to your muscles that your muscles then repair and get stronger from. They go into muscle protein synthesis. So you actually want that process to happen. If you jump into a cold plunge too soon after, you shut that down. So it, it's still kind of all over the board as to how long you need to wait. I wait till the next morning, but see how you feel. Maybe eight hours will do it, but you gotta watch that. Other things that can help, Epsom salts, hot baths, totally great. A sauna, foam rolling, massage, and then my curcumin chews, amazing, and fish oil. Those things can also help with inflammation. Another mission critical thing I already mentioned, we gotta make sure the protein's happening. With 30 grams of animal protein kind of being your trigger because you'll get the leucine you need to activate mTOR to go through muscle protein synthesis. Remember, as we age, we don't need less protein, we need more. And if you are a vegan or vegetarian, um, you're going to need more because you won't get that leucine necessarily that you need, you're gonna need higher grams. Basically, I like to dose 0 0.7 to one gram per pound of target body weight. And if you're really focusing on building muscle, I go to the one gram per pound of target body weight. Focus the most on your first and last meals of the day. 30 grams is the minimum. 
I'll, I, I get about 50 grams in at both of those meals. That's kind of my basics. All right, I'm gonna give you a couple more things to think of, and then I'm gonna give you a demo on some of these things as well. So again, global warm up, big movement, right? You might start like the gym I go to, I walk up the stairs, but if I'm here, I'll get on the TRX, I walk around some, I get my body warm, and then I'll do a TRX and do big squats, big presses, but I just mimic a lot of the movements I'm gonna to do to get my blood flowing. You're going to do three sets, of eight to 12 reps plus one easy warm up set. A set is an exercise, right? So let's say that we're going to do push ups. We are going to do a set with repetitions in it. Each time you do 12 repetitions, that's a set. All right. And we're going to do three of those. Your rest breaks, anywhere from 90 seconds to two minutes. What are you doing during that rest break? You walk around, you can stretch. I like to quite often during my rest breaks, I'll throw in some abs. Like I'll do some crunches, something like that. And again, remember, we're never sacrificing form for weight. Do not do that. And in form, we're always working through those full ranges of motion. And as much as possible, I like to do things standing, right? Because in life, we're not bolted to the floor. As you progress, you can do things on one leg. Now, how often should you do this? I would love to see you doing resistance training every other day, three times a week. Could you do split routines, all of that? Yes, but for just starting out, let's just focus on three days a week. That would be amazing because on the other days, I've got other things for you to do like HIIT training. And you are going to do your rating of perceived exertion based on really what, how much could you do in one repetition. Basically, what we are trying to do once you've gotten through the first week, which I'm going to walk through, but basically what you want to work up to is doing 70 to 80% of your all out max effort so that by the time you get to that 10, 11, 12th rep, you feel like you just can barely get it done. You really want to get as close to failure as possible. That is super important because you've got to do something called progressive overload. If you are new to this, we are starting out right? This is your very first time ever. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. This is amazing and awesome. And the first week is your technique week. And all you're going to do this week is really focus on getting the form down. You are not going to load yourself up and make this heavy. Just doing the exercise is enough. So we are doing super light resistance, about 30% of what you think you could do if you had to go all out. And I'm going to demonstrate each of these exercises with you. But again, if you're not sure, don't use any weight. Your body weight will be enough here. So first week is technique week. You're just focusing on nailing your form. And if you are not sure of your form, this is where you really want to focus on a mirror or get a trainer or a physical therapist to help you. Now it's week two. You're going to just do one set of your warm up. That's that easy one like you just did last week. Now we're going to go to two sets of moderate. So it should feel about 50% of your max effort for your second week. For your third week, we are going to do moderate resistance again. One easy set of a warm up. Now we're moving to three sets of that moderate, right? Now we're moving on to week four. Now, by the way, all along the way here, if you're overly sore, take an extra day, right? Do not push yourself through or just do a technique day where you just move everything through. And again, anytime you're sore at a joint site, that's a stop, right? Week four is when we start to move into hard, where we do that one easy warm up set. And now we're gonna do our three sets. And I really want you to be at like 80% where you go, holy smokes, this is hard. That's where I want you to be. And then once you get to that, that's where you now work out at that hard resistance. Now, after you've done this for eight to 12 weeks, and one more real big caveat as we're walking through this. You did that first week of, of the technique week, all three days. The next week you went to moderate, right? All three days. And the next week you went to moderate and you added an extra set before you went to the fourth week of hard. If anywhere along the way, this is feeling hard, back off. Back off, I do not want you injured. I don't want you too sore. We can always build up, right? We can't take away after we've done it. So just make it, just back off if you're not sure. Just keep it simple and always focus on form. 
After you've done this for eight to 12 weeks, it's time to reevaluate. It's like, how am I doing? And this is when things can get really exciting because now that you've built that strength in, now we can add in a power day. And here's why this is so important. Again, as we age, we're losing muscle, we're losing strength, but we're really losing power. And when you think about it, it's that power that, are, that really is so important for so many of the things that we do throughout life. And so after eight to 12 weeks, it's time to reevaluate. It's time to reevaluate your grip strength. It's time to reevaluate on the scale. How am I doing with muscle mass? And now this is where you can start to add in one power day a week, one, <laughs> okay? And that power day is gonna replace one of the other days. And this is different. You'll do a warm up set and then you will do two sets but you do about, remember when we did the moderate day, you're back to that moderate amount of weight, which now, by the way, is more than what it used to be, right? But this is where we're adding in some kind of explosion, some kind of acceleration. So on a step up, it could be that we're adding in a big knee lift fast, or we're adding in a little hop. On a squat, we might add in a little jump, or we might jump onto a little box, or we could add a kettlebell swing. These are the types of things that are going to really help you as we're aging playful out. I always say playful out at 100. I love this idea that Peter Atia talks about, Dr. Peter Atia on the Drive podcast, where like the centenarian decathlon, what do you need to do now to be able to do the things you want to do at 100? And one of the things you need to do is make sure you're maintaining the power. So check out all of these exercises and see what you can do. And again, we're always going to do these carefully, right? Because what we want to do is avoid injury at all costs. But the place you're most likely to get injured is not doing this stuff. It's doing the stuff during normal life. That's why we're doing this. So with the step up, you want to make sure that your bench, you're either at or below a right angle at your knee and hip. If this is higher, that's a problem. And then you're stepping up, you keep it on just one leg to start. Do not alternate back and forth. That makes it too easy. And this, is just technique, right? Then you can add dumbbells after the fact. I'm gonna show you a few ways to make it even harder besides adding weights. So these are super simple. What you can do to make it a little bit harder along with dumbbells is you can go up, up. So this actually incorporates a bit of a power move, see, by lifting up my knee. If you want to really take it, you can also compound with a chest press or an overhead press rather and push. If you want to add a little bit more of a power move, you can just jump up. Now again, with power moves, it's less weight. So I would not be doing this with any dumbbells. That would just be that. And trust me, just that alone, you feel it. Okay, so another super functional move is a squat. We do this all the time. Again, you'd start with no weight whatsoever, really working on form, making sure that your hips come back. You wanna do this and not elevate your heels. I see people do that by putting a weight plate down. You don't wanna do that. This is really working range of motion, flexibility. So you wanna make sure that you're working through your Achilles tendon too, and lengthening that. And then again, as you progress, you can add more weight. You can do what's called a goblet squat, where you hold one dumbbell up here and do it. You could put a bench, a, a bar on your shoulders, any which way you wanna do it. If you've got back or knee issues and you're not able to do this, one of the alternative things you can do is take an exercise ball and put it against a wall and do a modified squat. And I'm gonna show you a picture of that. So this is another way you can modify a squat if you've got back and knee problems. I can take my feet out a little bit more to take some of the pressure off my knees. I can always hold dumbbells, but look how supported I am here. And then of course you can make it a little harder by holding down there, right? So this is a ball wall squat. It's a great way to start working into doing squatting motions. When I think of a really great functional exercise, it's the bent over row. This is you getting the groceries out of the car, picking something up off the floor. This is an amazing exercise. It's also pretty advanced because there's a lot of stuff that has to go right. So I'm gonna show you a variation from this as well. 
But basically what you wanna make sure of is that your knees are bent, your hands stay close to your legs, your belly button's pulled to your spine. So right here already, I'm using my quads and my glutes and my back extensors and my core to keep me here. Then I'm going to rotate my hands and bring my palms up towards my chest and bring it back down, up and down. So my body is completely stable. I'm using my core, my glutes, my quads to keep me that way. And then I'm doing a bent over row, super functional exercise. If you've got any back injuries, this is a little bit like, uh oh, I'm gonna give you a modification that you can do. Now, this is a one arm row, and I see these done all the time at the gym, and my whole graduate work was in biomechanics and spinal biomechanics. When I see it done at the gym, I always wanna go change, correct them, and I hold back, because I know they don't want my opinion. <laughs> But what I want to make sure of is when you do this is that you don't do what I see people do wrong, which is put a knee and a hand on a bench. The reason being is that unless the bench is exactly at the right level for you, now it threw your hip off. So instead of doing that, you are going to instead think of yourself like a tripod. So here I am over a bench. I've got my belly button pulled in tight. My knee's a little soft. And then I want you to think of yourself just as if you were a tripod. So I'm not over here. My hands were together, I'm moving one hand off. I'm gonna grab the bench, uh, the, the dumbbell, and then I'm gonna pull it up and back down. And see how I'm rotating it up? It's called supinating. It works more of your bicep when you do that. And I'm really focusing on lifting my elbow up, drawing my shoulder blade back. But again, I'm not moving all of this. That's super stable, belly button to spine, knees a little bent, quads tight. So that is the modification. Okay, so I love push-ups because there's so many ways that you can modify them. The first up, I'm gonna show you a push-up against a bench, but this can also be done against a wall. So literally anyone can do a push-up. So the first one would be against a bench, but this again could also be against a wall. And the mission critical thing here is that I'm not sagging, right? That I'm using my core here, my belly button's pulled to my spine, and then I'm coming down to a right angle at my elbows and back up. And I'm not locking as I come up. And then I'm keeping my trunk very stable. So I'm not letting anything sag. I'm not doing this. So that's the first one. So again, that could have been done against a wall. That can be done against a bench. So that's going to be an easier version. Now, here's the thing. You might say, I can't do a push up on the floor. Well, you can with your knees. And you can start simply with a tabletop push-up. Look how easy this is. And it's all about how much weight. It, you always want to have your chest coming between your hands and a right angle at your elbows. But it's all about how much weight is over your hands. This, moving my hands out farther and bringing more weight over is harder, right, than what I just did. Lifting my knees up is harder. So I can continue to make this harder and harder and harder. The most important thing is that I've got my belly button lifted so I'm using my core as well, and I'm coming to a right angle. One of the best exercises that Jim, and the minute I say this, you're gonna be, no way, is a pull-up. And for you, if you can get a pull-up bar at home, it may just start with a hang. Then it might start with a flexed hang before you can actually do any of these. If you have someone that can assist you by you bending your knees and them holding your knees, great. If you don't have any ability to do that, I'm gonna show you another thing that you can do instead. And that is to use a band to do something called a pull apart that mimics it. But I'm gonna really emphasize that if you can do this, boy, the grip strength you get by having to hang is amazing too. Okay, so here's one way you can do this at home. And here's what's important, and you'll see this done wrong at the gym. Now you'll know and just, again, they probably don't want you to be their personal trainer. I've learned the hard way, but You'll see people at the gym doing a lot pull down and doing it behind. Do not do that. Very bad on your shoulder girdle. What I want you to do is pull this apart to your chest, okay? Now, keep your shoulders down, bend your knees, belly button to the spine. I'm keeping my arms long, but I'm pulling it to my chest. I am not pulling it behind me. Don't do that at the gym. Very bad on your shoulder girdle. So that is how we mimic a lap pull down. What's great about these bands is you can get tougher resistance. You can always double them up so they continue to progress with you. 
I'm gonna give you a couple ways that you can use a pull-up bar to do this as well. I'm gonna have to turn my back on you. So you could just start by hanging. This itself is hard, right? You can start with a bent hang. You can see me shaking, that's hard. You can get someone to help support your knees or you can just start with how many can I do, right? And if you can hang and hold, even better. And again, I know, I know, I know. But boy, will that help you with that grip strength. You do not want to be like me discovering, holy smokes, I can't open the jar anymore. So for an overhead press, I have a bit of form here that I'm a big stickler about. Now you can do this standing. You could do this seated. Anytime I can do standing, I'm going to prefer it because it just requires more of your body and more of your core. And when you're standing, you want to have your knees a little soft, your belly button pulled to your spine. And then what I want to make sure when you're doing an overhead press, so it's safer on your shoulders and something called your AC joint is to have your hands, your palms facing inward and you push up. And so when I'm doing this, it comes a little in front of my body, as you can see, they're not back here, right? It's a little bit in front and my palms face forward. This is really important. And as I'm doing this, I am pulling my belly button to my spine, critical. Just an easy stretch. Make these easier, you can put your hands here. That is easier. This is harder. This is harder. You can do just a seated. Again, these are breaks, so if you want to just do a little seated easy thing here, this is a great little simple break thing. And of course, another break thing you can do is a plank. Or an all the way up plank. And into more stretching. So think about what you can do in between those exercises. Walk it off, drink some water, do some stretching, do some, do some crunches. What things can you do during your time to just use all that time efficiently? Couple key important things here. First of all, progress over perfection, right? Don't get yourself all here and going, I want to hit that. We will just give yourself time, right? You know, this is super duper important. And I want you to track your progress. It is so motivating to see the muscle mass go up on the scale, or all of a sudden your grip strength's bigger, or all of a sudden, you know, you were squatting, holding 10 pound dumbbells, and now you're doing 20 pound dumbbells. It's amazing. And I want you to celebrate that. Focus on the strength. Focus on the power, focus on the muscle. When you do that, everything else is going to get better. Remember, muscle is that metabolic spanks, muscle is that sugar sponge. You build more muscle, everything improves. So here's the thing. I literally started resistance training when I was 16. There were none of these health clubs back then in those days. And I was working out with the high school football team. And uh, I, I joke now saying I was training for my 60s when I was 16. And so you might say, oh my gosh, I didn't start then. Well, it's never too late and it's never too early. Resistance training is non-negotiable if you want to age powerfully. And of course you do, right? And have that great quality of life as you age and help you keep track of your progress and stay motivated. I promised I had this. I have this handy worksheet that you can download for free so that you can record your exercises, your sets, your reps, your weights, and you can track your progress over time. And it's all about consistency consistency is key you got to stick to your routine and you got to continue to challenge yourself that is mission critical key now here's the deal i'll put the handout at jjvirgin.com forward slash power so this is to aging powerfully <music>